Hello, welcome to another segment on SecureSet. Not too long ago, we had a company that specializes in setting radio communication towers. They asked us if SecureSet, our high density expanding foam, would be a viable alternative to setting these towers. So we have a two segmented video for you. The first part of the video is going to be a comparison to what it takes to set a tower using traditional methods, i.e. concrete, versus secure set. So we have two towers set in identical holes. They're about 28 to 29 inches in diameter, 60 inches deep. The first part of the process will to visualize what it takes to do it with concrete, and then the next with secure set, and then we will determine, you know, the, you'll be able to see actually the, the difference. In the video, the time lapse on the concrete, and remember we had three people, an electrically powered cement mixer with water on site via a hose instead of transporting it with you. That process to set 31 bags of concrete took two and a half hours. We then set a similar tower, same size hole, using two four gallon kits of secure set. The whole process took 27 minutes. Take a look and see what you think.
Musa. So the process is complete. You've witnessed the setting of those two different bases for those radio towers. Remember, these are direct embedded, non-guide towers. So we took the base for the concrete and the secure set. Again, the concrete took two and a half hours to set. The secure set was 27 minutes. But here's the kicker. With the concrete, traditionally, the crew has to leave the site wait 24 hours, come back the next day to complete the erection of the tower. As with secure set, we have to wait one hour for it to set. At that time, they can start the assembly of the tower. So you can imagine how much time is saved, not only in the process, but in the complete picture of setting up this tower. Huge opportunity for labor savings. So now you're going to see segment two of this video, which is the testing. These towers are, are set in place under a very specific standard. It's an ANSI standard, that's A-N-S-I, and the, the code is ANSI TIA 222G. That specifies that a direct buried, non-guide, cantilever, 65-foot tower when it is subjected to a 60 mile an hour wind and the tower is coated with a half inch of ice, that there would be a four degree lean on the tip of the tower. The tip of the tower will lean 54 inches away from the base of the tower. That means that the base cannot be compromised when that load is on the tower. So what we've done is we've erected the tower, we've attached ropes, we've pulled the tip of the tower, we've set a plumb bob so that you can see the advancement of the tip to a point 54 inches away from the center point of the tower. We even went to beyond that actually, we went to 60 inches to make sure that the tower could withstand even you know, more significant load. So what happened was the tower was tipped, the plumb bob moved 60 inches, the base was examined, there was no movement at all on the base of the tower that was set with secure set. So watch the video and you'll see how this all came about. All right, we are ready for the test. The tip of the tower is connected with rope to a sky track. We're going to pull the tip to represent the wind load, the 60 mile an hour wind load. Today we actually have about a 15, 18 mile an hour wind and the plumb bob is, is moving around quite a bit. So the only influence I'm gonna have on this is I want this to be able to be stabilized over the measurement so during the during during the pull I'm just gonna make sure that this stays centered uh, over the uh, the measurement bar so we're ready to go right, 
So the test is starting. All I'm doing is keeping this centered over. Thirty six inches. Forty eight. Fifty four. So we're well past 54 inches, which means we have a tip deflection. So we have zero compression, which means that the tower uh, has been uh, stabilized significantly with the foam to prevent the compression side of the tower from moving under now a static load that is close to 60 inches. So we've completed the test. Fantastic results. We've actually pulled uh, the plumb bob out to about 60 inches. We have a, a wind blowing it in right now. I'm going to stabilize it. But we have zero compression. We have zero movement of the base. We have probably a four and a half tip, a degree tip deflection at the top. Fantastic test. The test went really well. We extended the tip of that tower so that the travel along the ground with the plumb bob is supposed to max out at 54 inches. We took it to 60 inches, basically beyond the four degree tip that is specified in the ANSI test standard. The examination of the base of the tower determined that there was no movement whatsoever. So the secure set performed over and above the standard that is specified for these type towers. So after that test was completed and we've determined that the secure set will hold the base of the tower in accordance with those standards, we determined that we wanted to find out how much load it would take to pull this base out of the ground. Remember, we have 80 pounds of product with a base of, a, of the tower that weighs 100 pounds and then the lifting eye that we used weighed about 85 pounds. So we had about 265 pounds of static load on the base of this tower when we started the test. It took 5,500 pounds of uplift load to pull this base out of the ground. Here's a short clip on how we executed that test. That test wasn't part of the ANSI standard, but it's something that we did in addition to the requirements. We wanted to show you what it actually takes to pull this base out of the ground. So that's the conclusion of this multi-segment video. Thank you very much. Again, for anybody that has the need for this type of application, direct embedment, secured base, or towers or poles or posts, secure set will do the job for you. Thank you very much.